The right wing lost their minds over the weekend at this story. Retired Supreme Court Justice John Paul Stevens. Repeal the Second Amendment. So this guy is, uh, you know, 97 years old. I think he retired when he was 90. Uh, but here's what he says, quote, That simple but dramatic action would move Saturday's marchers closer to their objective than any other possible reform. It would eliminate the only legal rule that protects sellers of firearms in the United States, unlike every other market in the world. It would make our school children safer than they have been since 2008 and honor the memories of the many, indeed far too many, victims of recent gun violence. So there's two things to say about this. The first one is just a point of fact. So when he says, quote, that simple but dramatic action would move Saturday's marchers closer to their objective than any other possible reform. I think that's objectively true. So in, in other words, if your goal is to limit or even try to eliminate the number of gun deaths in the U.S., well, yes, banning guns would get you closest to that. Now, I'm saying that based on the empirical evidence, not because I favor it, because I don't, and I'm about to get that in a, in a second. But, you know, you look at a place like Japan, which effectively banned guns, they have maybe three or four gun deaths per year. The U.S., where, you know, we have more guns than any other developed country, and um, we have 32,000 gun deaths every year, and 11,000 of them are homicides, and then the remainder are suicides and accidents. And um, that is so far above and beyond every other developed country, because every other developed country has um, stricter gun reform, and some of the other modern countries have banned guns. So in terms of whether or not it's true that it would massively limit um, the number of mass shootings and gun casualties, the answer to that is yes. Okay? I mean, there would still be a black market, and you'd still have some criminals get their hands on guns, so you'd still have some shootings. Um, but in terms of looking at it at the macro scale and crunching the numbers, there's no doubt that you would have a drop probably of over 90% if you actually banned guns and confiscated guns. Now, having said that, I totally disagree with John Paul Stevens here. Totally disagree with him. So, and I actually think he's hurting um, the movement for gun reform. Why do I say that? Well, very simply, the right wing has repeatedly been straw manning the people who are doing March for Our Lives. And their main argument against them has been, you guys want to ban guns. And the people on, in March for Our Lives don't want to ban guns. They've been crystal clear about that. David Hogg was just on Fox News saying, I'm in favor of the Second Amendment. Um, so what they've been calling for is a universal background check, a ban on assault weapons, and some sort of system that treats guns more like cars, where there's, you know, a process you have to go through. And uh, it's basically mild versions of gun reform that are... that their approval rating is through the fucking roof. I mean, you're talking anywhere from 90% to 97% for universal background checks. You're talking 60% for banning assault weapons. It's around the same for banning high-capacity magazines, which I don't think they're calling for, but is a type of reform that's massively popular. Even a majority of Republicans, even a majority of NRA members support many of these reforms. But when John Paul Stevens gets out there and he says, well, we should, we should repeal the Second Amendment and ban guns, well, then what you do is you embolden the opposition, the Republican opposition, and we're already trying to overcome a giant hurdle, which is, you know, um, lethargy on this issue of gun reform in Washington and not getting anything done on the issue of gun reform in Washington. And what you do is you give a little bit of merit to their giant fucking straw man that they've been smearing everybody with. And now, when they point at anybody who's trying to get mild gun reform, they're going to say, well, ultimately, you want to ban guns. And we say, no, we're not. Nobody even said that. And they'll go, yeah, yeah, they did. John Paul Stevens said that, the retired Supreme Court justice. Now, listen, he doesn't represent the March for Our Lives people. So, and he's allowed to express his opinion. That's all clear. But I'm just saying in the macro scheme of things, he is giving fuel to the fire, emboldening the right-wing opposition, and it giving a little bit of truth to their giant smear and their giant straw man that the March for Our Lives people are trying to ban guns. Now, furthermore, what's my take on this and what do I favor on this? Listen, I'm not in favor of banning guns. Why am I not in favor of banning guns? Well, you know, listen, f largely for the same reason I'm not in favor of banning drugs. I think that 
um, if you're a law-abiding citizen and there's no evidence and no indication that you're going to do some sort of criminal act, um, I do think you should be able to get a gun. Now, I don't think that's a totally unfettered, unlimited right and that it's free of regulation. In fact, I think that position, if you believe that, is one of the dumbest things I've ever fucking heard in my life. <laughs> but I do think that, generally speaking, you should be able to get a gun if, you're, if there's no indication that you're some sort of a danger and there's no indication of criminal record or anything like that or severe uh, mental issues or anything like that. Sure, you should be able to get a gun. So my position on drugs is legalize, tax, and regulate. My position on guns is legalize, tax, and regulate. Now, a lot hinges on that last word, regulation, um, but that's how civilized societies function. So for drugs, I would say we should legalize drugs, but I don't want fucking crystal meth in the streets. You can have some sort of an upper that gives you an amphetamine high, but not the worst form where, you know, for example... It rots your fucking teeth out or like crocodile. It makes your skin rot off. Like only if it's legal and regulated can you have versions of these substances that are the least harmful versions of these substances out there. So you're actually net saving lives and helping people. People are going to get high anyway. You might as well have uh, an intelligent um, version of that available where it limits the amount of harm and danger done. And also, they're doing it to themselves. Now, with guns, very similar thing. So, you want to allow people to have guns if they've indicated and they've gone through a process to show that, yes, they're responsible enough to have those guns. And, yeah, you can, lim uh, you can limit the kinds they can get and regulate it so that we don't have uh, random Joe Schmoes in Tennessee who are hunters, for example, with the same kind of weaponry that is used in war. So, I do think that there is an angle of freedom and liberty to gun ownership. I do. If you're somebody who's in a rural area and you go hunting, should the government be able to come and just take your rifles away when you've never committed a crime in your life and there's no indication you ever will? I don't think so. Uh, John Paul Stevens might think yes. And listen, ultimately, under his preferred system, would we have fewer gun deaths? Yes, we would. But my take on it is you have to balance the liberty and the freedom with the safety and the regulation. And that's how I feel when it comes to drugs. That's how I feel when it comes to cars. That's how I feel when it comes to guns. So, and again, I don't think he's helping by giving the straw man a grain of truth. And then now, when the right wing goes, the left wants to ban guns, they do have somebody to point to. They didn't until this point, because nobody on the left was saying ban guns. Now John Paul Stevens is saying ban guns. So now we have to stress the point even further that no, we're not talking about that, he's talking about that, here's what we favor. We want universal background checks, ban on high-capacity magazines, ban assault weapons, you know... Um, have a licensing system that makes it like cars, mental health checks, yada yada. So, I don't agree with him. I think he ultimately hurts the cause and makes it less likely that we'll have any kind of gun reform. Um, but having said that, I know why he says what he says. Because his ultimate goal is, he doesn't really care much about liberty or freedom of it. He cares about just limiting the deaths. And that's a reasonable thing to think about, but... Um, in a civilized and free society, you need to balance that with liberty and freedom for the individual. And I don't think he he weighs that enough, and I don't think he cares about that enough, but he should. <laughs>